Hello, I'm Professor Liu, here with art prof teaching artist Jordan McCracken Foster. Welcome to our video where we critique art in movies and TV. Today, we have Titanic from 1997. If you would like to grow as an artist, but you cannot afford to take an art class, we have everything you need here at Art Prof, tutorials, critiques, and career advice. You want to get started by subscribing to our channel and ringing the bell to make sure you don't miss out on anything. I really think about this as the quintessential life drawing scene in the movies. Who didn't see this film? I mean, this film was ridiculous when I was a kid. I mean, I was probably in high school when this came out. I was an infant. I was an infant. All right, <laughs> awesome. But you watched the movie later. Yeah, I watched it maybe when I was in high school at some point. It was on TV and it took like eight hours to watch it because of all the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Jordan, why don't you give a primer on this movie for those of you who have not seen it before you might want to give them a spoiler alert because it doesn't end great and i don't want anyone to be upset that we ruined the movie for them okay okay fair enough all right so spoiler alert for a 20 something 23 year old film uh, basically, it takes place in 1996 where um, these guys are doing an expedition on the Titanic and they find all this, all these artifacts and they find this, um, they're looking for this jewel, I think, right? Uh, one of the jewels that Rose had, apparently. And they find this drawing and they interview her and then she's telling the story of her life. And um, she's, post, she's supposed to be 17 in the movie, I think, or 18. And she's intended to marry this 30 year old who she doesn't love. Meanwhile, you have Jack, who's played by Leonardo DiCaprio, who's like this homeless Aladdin type of character. And he um, he sneaks onto the boat and, you know, they fall in love, Romeo and Juliet style. And the scene that we're going to be discussing today um, is where Jack, the artist, draws Rose naked. And it's all scandalous and everything. And they have a steamy romance. And then the um, the Titanic crashes to an iceberg and it sinks. Jack dies and it's really horrible. And then uh, we go back to all these years later and there's a and then it turns out Rose has the jewel all along that she dumps in the water, probably costing them millions of dollars. But you know whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but we did. I, get... I never got that. I was always kind of pissed off at that. I was like, really? You're just going to have all these people searching for this thing. They heard your story for all these hours, and you just throw what they're looking for. In the... <laughs> anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. I'm sorry. That always just made me a little irritated. Well, what annoys me is that Jack didn't have to you. die. Like, she totally could have let him float yeah. on her thing. Oh, yeah. He, they were floating on some piece of wood or something, and she he totally could have fit on there. And he's like, no, I love you too much. I'll freeze to death. Like, girl, scoot over. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to tell you, as an artist, I rewatched the scene the other day because I was preparing for this movie critique. And I was like, dude, Jack, you have clearly not drawn from life before even though he claims earlier in the movie when he shows Kate Winslet his portfolio of drawings, oh yes, these are all drawn from life. I'm like, you do not know how to work with a nude model, Jack. You have no <laughs> idea. Because if you guys look at this image of the pose that she's in, she's got her arms up. I'm like, no, you never let a nude model pose with their arms up because their arms fall asleep in like two seconds. He's not right. good to work with. Like, I would not <laughs> recommend the models to work with Jack Dawson because he does not know what he's doing. <laughs> you know, this is one of those times where it's like, do we go for accuracy in real in real life or do we make a steamy romance? And this is one of those where, like, veto on the realistic quality of it and we're just going to hype this up. And we were talking about this before. Apparently, this was the first scene of the film of, that was even shot. It's just him drawing her all all naked and stuff. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, Jordan, I'm wondering, when was the first time that you draw from, um, you drew from a nude model? I was either 14 or 15 years old. 
And uh, it was because it was recommended to me by another artist who I was working with at the time who did not go to my school. But he said, if you have access to, to this, it'll really get you a, a head start. And, you know, when you want to do characters and things like that. And um, I remember, you know, because when you're 14, 15 years old and talking about nudity and and that whole thing, it gets very, very awkward for parents and family members and stuff. And so I'll tell you guys two quick stories about uh, the experiences I had. One was from my mom. And I told her very explicitly, I said, Mom, I'm going to take figure drawing courses. And we're drawing a nude figure and blah, blah, blah. And she said, okay, Jordan. But it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, Mom, I'm going to such and such a place. And they don't really listen, but they hear you say, going someplace. And they just go, like, okay, whatever, it's fine. And then a couple months later, after the semester, I showed her my work. And she was so shocked. She was like, Jordan, oh, my goodness. I didn't know you were going to be drawing naked women oh my gosh she freaked out for like a couple days and <laughs> and she was real concerned about it and then she's like it's okay jordan um you can keep drawing i just i just needed a minute you know just realizing her son was growing up and it's not even like it was a sexual thing it was just me trying to learn how to draw um the next story is a little even more strange i was talking to my aunt and I showed her some of my work. She was in her 60s at the time. And she said, oh, they got you drawing titties at your school, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, auntie, oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, it, was, it was very embarrassing. So that, that was my first experience of it. But I ended up excelling. By the time I got to my undergrad, I was pretty good at it. And I still study to figure now almost 10 years later, really. So, yeah. It just cracks me up that this is, like, all romancy because... When I work with nude models in my classroom, it's so matter of fact. And I'm always saying yeah. things to them like, do you guys need a space heater? Is it too cold? Do you want me to move the right. heater over here? I mean, it's like the total opposite of that. But I yep. will say working with a nude model, it can be tricky because sometimes they don't always know exactly what you want them to do. And actually what I do most of the time is I don't tell them how to pose. I just say, oh, well, this is the type of pose I want you to do, but you do whatever pose you want. Because I had this jerk teacher in graduate school. He really would try to pose the model. He'd be like, okay, move your foot to the left. Now I want you to put your elbow two inches over here. Now turn your chin this way. I'm like, what do you think? She's some mannequin that you're trying to pose? He was such a jerk. That's crazy. It was so annoying. Anyway. Jack Dawson, he should have told her about the arms above that. <laughs> that was a bad, bad idea. All right, let's yeah. look at the drawing that he ended up with. What's your first reaction, Jordan? Well, um, <laughs> it could be better. You, you know, it's I'm trying to pull it up bigger on, on my screen here. Um it, it feels stale. It feels very, very stale. It feels very, very stiff, you know, and I feel like just with figure drawing in general, that's something I always comment on even for our, our, um, people who show us their stuff on art prof and their portfolios is they're always very static, very stiff. And um, there's there's a life to it that's missing, you know. I mean, in terms of accuracy, I'm like, OK, I guess, sure. But there's there's still something that just makes it feel like it's one it's coming out of one of those how to draw books uh that i can't really get away from i think she also has a tiny bit of a lazy eye but that's just me well i don't know if you guys um, know this but james cameron did this drawing the director of the movie right. which makes it even more hysterical because it's like really <laughs> you couldn't get over your little ego for two seconds to have like a real artist come in and do something. I mean, it's so stiff. Like, and he did not yeah. draw this from life. This is totally drawn from a photo, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. The the lighting is is very strange. Um, it's I don't I don't want to say. Here's the thing that that has me conflicted. You know, Jack is supposed to be this poor kid on the street, and so it doesn't make sense for him to have developed and grown up or, or gone to some sort of art school or institution so he's you know so if this is someone who's self-taught then he is a he is a freaking prodigy in, at that point because he's like supposed to be 17 years old never took a class and learning all this himself like that's prodigy level but <laughs> however you know 
as someone who's a you know coming in with a professional mindset there's quite a few few issues with it um you know one we were starting to talk about the process of his drawing if you like if you actually watch the film he starts off with like the darkest line possible which is a big no-no when you're doing figure drawing because you have to constantly be adjusting you know and you have to determine um you know how fluid you want this drawing to look and you know all there's so many things to think about that doing thick dark line is probably the worst thing you could possibly do. And it doesn't matter what type of charcoal you're using because any type of charcoal is going to leave a pretty dark mark if you're pressing down that hard. I mean, the charcoal to right. me, it looks like compressed charcoal. I mean, that does not look like vine charcoal to me. Right? Yeah, it looks like compre uh, yeah, compressed charcoal. It's been a while since I used it. I had to think back, like, what is it again? <laughs> well, because vine charcoal always has this, like, slight tilt to it. And this charcoal yeah. looks very stiff and very straight. So I would guess that yeah. it's compressed charcoal. And it's like, really, dude, you're going to press down that hard with compressed charcoal for your first line of the drawing? Like, come <laughs> on. You obviously have never drawn from life before. Or if you did, you were doing a yeah. crappy job of it. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, I now I'm wondering if... Um, so the, the one who did the drawing is actually James Cameron. Was the one when they were filming in the hand moving, is that also James Cameron? Is that someone just making random strokes and the final art was James Cameron's? Do you know? I feel like it should be his drawing because it looks the same, or maybe they just had somebody copy it. I don't actually know that. I, don't know. I, I was curious. I, I really I just I just thought of that now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe there's something different in between the the stages. I would have to take a take another look into it. But I, yeah, you guys in the chat, tell us what you think about Jack's drawing. Do you agree with us? Do you think it was done from a photo? Do you think James Cameron cheated? He totally did. No chance he had that from life. Um, what do you think about the drawing, though? Just as a piece, do you think that it works? Um, because I think my biggest problem with it is that this drawing is all about the details. Like he really did not spend that much time really articulating the form. Like the lighting is not very good. And a lot right. of the shading on the arms, it's, it's very cosmetic. I don't get the feeling looking at this that there's much of a rib cage in there. I mean, I was not able to find a full out image of the drawing, but if you guys look up here, this is further on in his process. Let me see if I can find one that has the torso. Yeah, it's like if you look at the way he's drawing the torso, he's not thinking about the structure of the torso, right? It, it just seems like he's looking at the surface. <laughs> well, then again, if you're I'm Jack, sorry. I mean, what else are you doing? <laughs> you, you know, like we said before, in Jack's mind, I don't think that's what he was thinking about in the context of this movie. I just, I had this suspicion. Maybe he was thinking about, maybe, maybe he was so distracted that he was just doing like a crappy, maybe he's actually a really good artist, but he was so distracted by Kate Winslet that he couldn't do it. It's possible. I don't know. Like, like you said earlier, for me, figure drawing has always been very academic in the way I think about it. It's always like, you know, there might be a second of like, whoa, okay, they're up there. And then as soon as I put the pencil to, to the paper, I'm like, all right, let's go. And, you know, and I do it so much now, it just becomes second nature. But it's, it's really, really funny in terms of like the structure and everything like that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, there, there's nothing there that says that he's really trying to approach it in a way to make it super um, accurate or have, have uh, feel, you know, feel solid. It just feels like, because in the context of the movie, I'm, I'm trying to like compare both at the same time, because it's hard to talk about this without talking about the context. You know, she was impressed with how, how he drew. And he's like, okay, since she's really pretty and I, I'm falling in love with her, I have to make her face super gorgeous and, you know, all that stuff. And so clearly he's spending all his time on that. And then the and most people, when they're looking at artwork who don't have a trained eye, will look at the focal point, whether it's a face or, you know, whatever it is. And then the rest of it, they uh, some people can get away with just leaving off the rest of it. All you guys who send your stuff to Art Prof, don't, don't do it like that. But, <laughs> the, but that does happen sometimes and so i think that that might be part of it he's thinking okay the face and 
the really masculine hands and all that kind of stuff. Those are some really masculine hands, I gotta say. But um, maybe that's what is going through Jack's mind as the artist here. I don't know. We've got some activity <laughs> in the chat. Ashley agrees with us. They are saying super stiff. You can tell he started off with contour lines instead of gesture lines. Absolutely. You see, he's just thinking about outlining the figure and he's not thinking about the figure as a form. Awesome. Sarah Manuel is agreeing. Ashley is saying in the background shading looks like an afterthought. Messy. Yeah, what's up with that stupid like made up shadow that's behind her left breast? Like that was not drawn from observation. That was him going, oh, this looks empty. I think I'll fill this in. Like I've seen that a thousand times. So lazy, James Cameron. And Rebecca... <laughs> Abar Banal is saying, oh my God, this video idea kills me. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> killing us too, because I watch movies and whenever I see like artwork or an artwork scene, I just like, oh, want to like die of cringiness. It's just so painful. Like not yeah. good. Jack. I wonder if other people feel like that with like, like athletes see a sports movie and they go like, it's not like that. Or he would totally like have twisted his, you, you know, ankle doing this or whatever. I, I'm curious now. I will say though, he did use charcoal paper and that was a good move on Jack's part. Right. <laughs> yes, very much. Because so. you know move. something, if you try to do a charcoal drawing, on just regular white drawing paper, it's actually a lot harder to do because charcoal paper has a slight tooth to it and it has a really beautiful texture and so it holds the charcoal really well. So at least mm -hmm. we know that Jack knows what he's doing at the art store, right? Can I give him credit for yeah. that? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but you know what Jack did not think about? He did not think about his art history references because there is a whole history of reclining female nudes. I mean, Velazquez did it, Ang did it, Titian did it. And so this is something that you see for centuries. But here's the difference though, okay? If you guys go back and you look at Jack's drawing, you guys notice how she's wearing that sapphire necklace, the one that she just tossed into the ocean later. <laughs> so here's the thing. There is this Manet painting called Olympia which actually during its time period was scandalous. It destroyed Manet's career. And the reason why is because typically speaking, you have something like Titian's Venus of Urbino. And so this is a figure which is known as being nude, which is more acceptable because she's totally nude and people accept that. But what Manet did that made everybody freak was that he gave Olympia just a little bit of clothing. She's got one shoe coming off. She's wearing a choker and she's also wearing this bracelet and a little bit of a flower. So people saw this as naked, as being like dirty and scandalous. So if you hold Jack Dawson's drawing against that, he's turning her into this scandalous drawing because she's naked, not nude. Jack, you didn't take Art History 101? Like, come on, you should be thinking about your Art History references. I'm so disappointed in Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Let's see. I'm Sarah Manuel <laughs> saying, I thought Jack was too poor to afford such paper. Oh, maybe he stole it. I was thinking that, but I was like, I don't want to accuse the dude of just stealing. I know he already stole uh, a ride on the Titanic. Let's see. But... We got a comment. Ashley is saying the breast is so rounded. Boob job. Yes, that is not <laughs> a natural looking breast. It's, it's weird. It's too, like, perky for the position that it's in. No, see, I know about this, okay? Because even though she's in a reclining position, breasts don't get that, they don't point up that much. Like, they have to sag. Like, they have to, there has to be a certain degree of gravity for that to work. So, Jack, not buying it right now. Maybe he wasn't looking carefully enough which is kind of weird because you think he would be looking more carefully. <laughs> Jack, you know, the one situation where it was okay for you to look that carefully, you didn't do it. And now I'm like really, really disappointed. <laughs> Dang it, Jack, you done messed up. <laughs> Not good. And then, you know, something else I noticed, Jordan, in this still, he's smudging so much and he's not using any erasers. 
Like, dude, it's a charcoal drawing. You need all your supplies. You need your kneaded eraser. You need your eraser stick. You need your Stadler white plastic eraser, even though they didn't make those in the 1910s. Like, what's up with that? What what did they have in 1912? I don't even, like... I never even thought about that. I, clearly, they have paper and charcoal and like oil paint and stuff. But what did he have available to him? They must have had erasers. Come on, don't you think? I, I don't know if he would have had it though. I'm so I, I don't. I just don't know. Like, if were erasers super expensive if they were available in 1912? I don't know. I don't know either. I guess I don't have a book on the history of erasers, but maybe somebody should write one. <laughs> You guys have the internet. We're streaming now. You guys can look it up and put it in the comments. Yeah, you, you guys be our, our research work. Oh, Jordan, you got to critique this hand for me. Because here we oh, have man. this still, her her face is like super well developed and like dark and detailed. But now he's like right. just getting going on the hand. So what do you think about this initial gesture? Uh, the initial gesture, you, you know what, I'm okay with the initial gesture more than the final product um because right there is just you know like a couple marks here a couple marks there uh that doesn't really bother me as much you know it's very um it it actually reads more feminine here than in the final version which is weird because i so on one screen i'm looking at uh the one that's on the stream and then on my computer i have the final one up and the fingers it looks like how I would draw my hands, honestly. <laughs> like, you know, like I, I've been known to have very, like, very large hands. <laughs> People always say that. And generally speaking, again, generally speaking, um, women's fingers tend to be a lot more tapered, a little bit more narrow and stuff. And men's tend to be a little more chunky and, you know, thick and, you know, and it just, it's very um, uncomfortable seeing that hand next to that face because the face i'll you know i'll hand it to him very feminine looking very soft features for the most part um but that just it really just throws throws me off and it's uncomfortable um and then also the way this thumb is kind of going in like this you it know looks broken. Feels, yeah it looks very very strange um and i think the reason i felt okay with it in the original like the sketchy version was i think the hand actually changed sizes a little bit i think the hand was smaller there and then it got enlarged later on you know do you see yeah. that is that just me i i think that's what happened because you know the hand is so much more thick in the final version and it's bothering me i can't get over you know it you know now. why this happened i know exactly why that happened because if you look at his in progress parts he didn't work the entire figure at the same time. You see in these early drawings, like he went straight for that face, okay? And yeah. he did not develop the various parts of the drawing to develop at the same rate. So he like went mm -hmm. right into the face, like finished it. Right. And then he like started the hand. And so by the time he finished the hand, it didn't match the face. And I'm always mm -hmm. getting on my students about this because a lot of people draw the figure they get really mesmerized by a certain part of the figure. They like really develop it, make it super rendered and really detailed. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh crap, the foot is like tiny, but it's like too late mm. to fix it now because I spent two hours rendering the nose, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like one, it's one of those things where it's like zoom out or, or back away from your piece and figure it out. Um, and also now I think about it, Jack was working on a pretty large piece of paper. That's that was probably the first mistake because he was the way he was situated was in such a way so that he couldn't back up. He would have had to get up, change his whole situation and set up just for him to look at it. And so, you know, now we're in this position where things are kind of messed up. And I understand that there are some people who like they're like on YouTube, I see these videos, like how I draw like a printer and it's bizarre. They like draw one line and then they literally just, you know, they go all the way down to the next one, the next one. And it literally looks like they're drawing it like a printer. It looks really cool. Oh. I don't know how they do that. And quite frankly, I don't want to spend the time to learn how to do that. Um, for people who want to do things a little faster, <laughs> you know, you have to draw things, you know, and build it up as they go. Like if I were to do this drawing, I would have started with, you know, the head, maybe the direction with like the T shape and then drawn the whole torso or I'm sorry, the, the, the line of action or the spine 
and then I would have put the, the torso and the legs. I actually do arms last personally, uh, just because uh, whenever, at least when it's standing pose, it's I feel like the arms can kind of be left out if they had to be, you know, because the stance is so important. In this case, he's only drawing, you know, I guess from the belly button up, so that legs don't apply. But now I'm wondering why why couldn't there have been the legs? You know, that's part of the pose. That's part of I think what probably made it interesting or something. I don't know. Well, maybe he whipped just... out on the legs. Maybe he's just really bad at drawing legs and is like, I don't want to draw legs. You know, you know these people who are like. I'm really bad at drawing legs, so I'm just not going to draw them. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to correct itself anytime soon if you avoid it. Oh, yeah, no. No, no, no. <laughs> you know something else? I have to say, we're, we're sort of giving Jack a hard time. I feel a little bad about it, but I have to really commend him on how much he was looking at the figure and looking at his drawing at the same time. Because if you watch the video... <laughs> He's really observing really carefully. <laughs> Who knows what his motivation was for doing that? Maybe it was the drawing, maybe it was something else. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that that's really good eye contact because a lot of my students in my drawing classes, they spend too much time looking at their drawing and not enough time looking at the model. And so I say to them, look, you got to look at the model more than you look at your drawing because that's where all the information is. You know what? If I were Jack, you know what I would have been like? I would have been like, you know what, Rose? Drawing is all about seeing. I want to see you right now. Like, I totally would have, like, used that. You know? That would have been... He would have been like, I need to get back and look at you from a distance so I can see the bigger shapes. Like, he was not sneaky about this. He could have done a much better job for himself. Let's see. We got stuff in the chat. Juliana is saying, I love your videos. And what about the other girls? Oh, good question. Because earlier in the movie, he does show Rose a whole portfolio of his French girls. So we're going to save that for another video because that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> There's so many of them. <laughs> so we will definitely get to that. Um, but I guess the thing that also bothers me about the other hand, let's just keep writing on his hand drawing, um, is if you look at the other hand, I mean, don't they look like loaves of bread? Like he did not think about the skeletal structure in that hand, right? Because- You're talking about the top hand, Yeah, right? like if you're drawing a hand, you have to look at the phalanges, you gotta look at the knuckles, if you're not looking for that skeletal structure, you're going to end up with like sausages. And that's basically what we have here. I mean, he did not do a good job on that hand. Yeah, hand, hands are a weakness for sure. Um, it's kind of like the same thing that I said with the other hand. It looks masculine and sausage you know? And if he's trying to accentuate the, the, the femininity of Rose, then he should have tapered it off a little bit, added the structure. Um, you know, and now, now that I look at it, I feel like that back arm also is a little off, too. It feels like um, the way it sits in the socket and the arm doesn't really connect very well. Do you see that? Yes. Like, well, you know something, though, Jordan? I see a tangent in this drawing. <laughs> do you see the tangent? If for the, I'm going to do this now. For those of you who don't know what a tangent is, it's when you have an object that's like right up against the edge of the paper. So if you look at this still, does everybody see how Rose's elbow is right up against the edge? See, you know what? If Leonardo DiCaprio had done thumbnail sketches first, he could have avoided that tangent. But instead, he was lazy and went straight into the final drawing and didn't plan out his composition in advance. <sighs> Leonardo DiCaprio... Uh-uh-uh. You would never have Rookie made it in my mistake, drawing class. <laughs> Rookie mistake. <laughs> Actually, you know what bothers me more about the back arm? Don't you feel like that shadow on the lower part of the arm? It looks like somebody painted her arm black. Yeah. It doesn't fit with uh, the natural skin tone that she has. Because I, I, is there a still we have of the entire scene with like the pillow and stuff behind Let it? Let me see. Do I don't know if I have one of the whole scene. I mean, I have one of just her. Yeah, sorry. Okay. don't have it. Okay. Okay. Well, assuming that the couch that she's laying on is darker than her skin, I think. Yeah, yeah there we is. go. So you can already see it's like a dark green right there. That, the, the um, oh my goodness, what the local color. 
of the couch is like a dark green and then her skin tone we can just call it like a peach you know pale peach type of color that peach pale color will never get as dark as the couch just naturally and so when you have that shadow go darker than the pillow and the couch behind it um then it feels like a black hole has started to come out of her arm and it's really really strange um also, yeah. do you see in the still of her reclining that that couch had a pattern on it and he didn't draw the pattern? See, the final drawing doesn't have the pattern. Jack, you are such a wimp. Oh my you know, God. You know, you know what's crazy? For the last 23 years, Jack Dawson has been sort of the quintessential artist in film. Like the, whenever people think of art in movies and you know figure drawing something, they think Jack Dawson. But when we really analyze it and we see how lazy he actually is and how <laughs> unwilling he is to do certain things, it just destroys the entire image. And it's just like, I, I, have, I have lost a certain amount of respect for Jack. Nope. And for the fact he didn't make the girl move over when, they, when he was like freezing his butt off. But you know, <laughs> there, there are a lot of poor decisions, but a lot of them were artistic ones. I mean, oh, Juliana saying in the chat, that's why he didn't win the Oscar at that time. Exactly. You know, he he was not being artistic enough. He was not demonstrating. Well, well, then again, we decided already he probably did not go to art school. So maybe we should cut him some slack. But <laughs> then again, there was no YouTube in 1912. So where did he learn to draw? Maybe he borrowed some books from the library? I have no idea. I, I you know... I don't know where he would have learned to draw. Maybe he's just bored on the street and it's like, I'll figure this out. I have to say also, he did not set up the lighting. Did you notice that? Oh, yeah. The lighting was terrible. I would never want to draw in that kind of lighting. No way. <laughs> like, if you look at the lighting, it's coming from all different directions, right? Yeah. Because yeah, you know, it's coming from the cool. left. It's coming from above on her breasts. But it's also on the left on the upper arm. Th this would be the equivalent of like flash photography, like uh, or uh, was fashion photography, you know, in a drawing because the lighting, like we just mentioned, isn't consistent. And when you're doing a project you, or a painting or drawing, you always want that to be consistent because if that falls, you're going to get so confused over everything, and then you end up with black black holes for arms, like in this drawing. I have to say, Jack Dawson, I am not impressed at all with your skill set you you would not have done well in my drawing class let's see we've got a comment from <clears throat> ashley they couldn't both well be on there they would have been too heavy they would have both went down loving the video so far that's because it's just so easy to make fun of this drawing it's just like i don't know like like really you had all that money to produce that movie and this like pivotal scene that like clinches their romance. You, you couldn't bother to hire someone who could actually draw. Like he probably spent more money on this one stupid scene. I remember it's just a scene of dishes crashing on the floor. I don't know if you remember that, but there's just there's so many scenes that. where it just was like, Oh, all these pictures fell on the floor. Look at all the cups. They went crashing all over the place. It's like those plates probably cost like $2,000 for him to buy. Yeah. It's so unfortunate. Let's see. Maria Rev is saying the black on her upper arm is so grainy. It's distracting. Yeah, because if he had erasers, he could have taken his kneaded eraser and like really blended it. And then he could have done like a little bit of cross hatching and highlight with his eraser stick. I mean, he's not using charcoal to its fullest potential as a drawing material, don't you think? Yeah, no, no, he's not. And you know, you know what else I'm starting to look at now? It's starting to distract me. Is the actual like pendant itself, like the the jewel? It looks like it started to explode out of the the thing you know it, it doesn't feel like it curves naturally it feels like it's just like plopped on <laughs> you see what i'm saying i feel like it doesn't even look like a gem like it, it looks like a gumdrop doesn't it yeah it feels like a little rock that like like a little um granite rock or something that has no polish 
It's just so weird. I'm sorry. You know what it is? He, he didn't I, I get like the, like the <laughs> sheen that... of the jewel. Because if you look at the photo, there's like really, really strong highlights. And also, you know what else Jack didn't do? If you look at the still of Rose, do you see the shadow that's underneath the pendant? Yeah. Now, if you go back to the drawing, the shadow is like really thin and flat. Oh, Jack, James Cameron. Jack, my boy. Let's see. Hansa is saying in the chat, the necklace doesn't look like it's laid on her neck. It looks super stiff and solid. Yeah, like if you look at the drawing, you'll notice that actually the chain part of the necklace, like doesn't it look like a rope? It does actually. It looks like she's... <laughs> You know, I'm not, I'm not even gonna it. it doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> like well, that. if you look at the photo, you can see that there's like a looseness to the necklace and it looks yeah. like it's actually sitting there. Like, you know what it is? This is what bothers me about this drawing in general, because we can bother Jack about all these things. But the drawing just doesn't have any subtlety to it. It's so like blatant, like it's trying so hard to let you identify it. This is the eye. This is the mouth. This is the hand. Like, he doesn't do any editing of the image. Because I think sometimes what makes drawing really interesting is what you choose not to draw can just be as important as what you choose to draw. And he's not doing that. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of equal focus um, everywhere. Like, in term, just in terms of, like, the highlights, you know, you got the same uh, type of highlight on the face as on the arm, as on the breast, as on the pillow, even the background, like in certain parts, is just all super light. And then for the dark areas, you have the couch behind the um, the armpit, the black hole arm, and the hair, and they're all the exact same values, and it's just, it's flattening things out. And then along with the details that you were talking about and the lack of looseness and the necklace pendant thing, it's just, it's not there. And then the sausage fingers. <laughs> Oh, we didn't sausage. talk about the hair. What do you think about the hair? Um, <laughs> they look, <laughs> it looks like grass, actually, a little bit. I was thinking um, pasta. Pasta? I could see that. Yeah, I could see pasta, too. Either way, I, it just feels, um, it's that, there's that lack of, sub, lack of subtlety. So there's, what I'll describe as like first, second, and third, details right so the first detail would be just you got the chunks which i don't have a problem with like the main chunk that's how i would actually recommend it start doing hair probably not making the exact same size like it's done here but i digress then you have the second layer where you know you start to put a little bit more of the strands in and start figuring things out and then you can have the third level of detail where you can start showing the swooping and maybe um it, how it wraps around the arm or you know something like that and it feels like he just stopped short of all that. And it feels, um, and the lighting for it feels very, very strange. Um, there's no, there should be a shadow somewhere, like a really consistent one, uh, like a cast shadow or form shadow, I mean. Um, but I can't tell where the lighting's coming from exactly. So it makes it more difficult. No, I mean, if you look uh, at the hair by itself, you have no idea where the lighting is coming from. And ideally, <clears throat> you should be able to look at it and say, oh, the lighting's from above because here are the highlights, right. here are the shadows. And I feel like he fell into that trap of people just trying to draw individual hairs. And he's not looking at the hair as like a mass that has light right. and shadow on it. it. It's just the most like surfacey treatment of that area. We've got right. more stuff from people in the chat. Maria Rev says that the necklace looks almost wooden. Yep. And the necklace should parallel the contours of her body. See, it, it's like he just totally missed all those like subtle nuances that were in the form. He just made all these assumptions. Like he wasn't observing carefully enough, which I don't understand because wasn't that the whole point? Uh, let's see, Juliana saying, the heart of the sea seems the rock of a nail. <laughs> Ashley saying, the black hole arm and sausage maker. <laughs> And Maria is saying, I think the lack of midtones is a huge issue. Oh, I'm so proud of our audience for having <laughs> such high standards. <laughs> I just love it. Well, because I'm sure a lot of people who saw the movie really liked the drawing and were all swept up into the whole 
love thing, but it's yeah. like, uh uh-uh. uh. Guys can yeah. do. Yeah, they're, they're just, they're normies. They're normies. The art, pe- the people who have the artistic eye can see the flaws. Exactly. And there are several, as we've been talking about for who knows how long. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys. We'll explore some of our other videos. We've got other movie critiques. We've got a video on how to create a figure composition. And if you would like to continue to grow as an artist, you can subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out on anything. And thank you to our top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. You guys are keeping us afloat. And thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye.